it's great to be here with you today and this is amazing. This is the first time I've seen all the sections of the ichthyosaur skull put together. It's quite incredible. It's pretty large, isn't it? Bigger than you expected? Yes. <laughs> it's These a lot were bigger. huge animals. All we have here is the skull. It's about a metre and a half long, maybe just less than that. If you can imagine that the rest of the body would have been another eight or nine metres, so a, a nine or ten metre long animal. Wow, that's quite incredible, yeah. It would be the, one of the top predators in the ocean mm -hmm. about 200 million years ago. They're known throughout Europe, this particular species. It'd be nice to know more about it. So what we have done is we've taken a sample from the rear and we're getting that analysed at the moment. And that should tell us what nanofossils are in the rock. We're going to look at the crystal structure of the rock and hopefully that will tell us when this is alive and possibly where it was found as well in the UK. So where it's from, you could even pin it down to a town. Uh, yeah, a, a geographical region like mm. maybe Lyme Regis, maybe Whitby, somewhere like that. Mm. But it would be the early Jurassic. They are only known from Europe, so it's relatively local. Okay. I don't know much about ichthyosaurs, other than I believe they're an early form of dolphin. So what can you tell me about it? This specific ichthyosaur that we have here is a Temnodontosaurus. And that means the cutting tooth lizard, if you look at the teeth, some of them, like this one here, actually have a really nice cutting edge on them. Oh, right. Serrated a bit like a T-Rex tooth, if you like. So this particular large beast would have been the T-Rex of the seas. Okay. Really one of the top predators. And ichthyosaurs generally, yes, they're sort of dolphin shaped. You've got a young ichthyosaur on display as well, a juvenile ichthyosaurus breviceps that's really quite nice and complete. And that body outline that you have, if you flesh it out, that skeleton, it would look something like this. So yes, they look like dolphins because they fulfill exactly the same ecological niche, eating small fish. The main difference being that this is a reptile, dolphins are mammals, and dolphins and other cetaceans, whale-like creatures, they move through the water through doing that with their tail, whereas ichthyosaurs go from side to side, a bit like crocodiles, because wow. they're reptiles. I wouldn't have thought they were a reptile at all, but that's it. really interesting. Closely related to dinosaurs, actually. Dinosaurs were on land at the same time that ichthyosaurs were in the sea. And oh. if they take them back far enough, they have the same ancestors. Wow. I can see this skull that we've got here isn't in the best condition, which might be an understatement. There's a lot going on with it. Can you tell us what's happening? Firstly, it is a fabulous skull. It's almost complete. It's got some fantastic pointy teeth, which is always good. But you're right, there are a lot of issues because it's such an old specimen and a lot has happened to it over the years, including, unfortunately, something called pyrite decay. And that's when the mineral pyrite that's within the rock actually begins to degrade and break down and it starts to get very acidic and break up the rock matrix. And someone's then tried to stop that by putting a lot of glue on top. So that glue has got to come off. A lot of the pyrite decay products have got to come off and hopefully we'll get down to the bone of this orbit. This is one of the glories of ichthyosaurs, these orbits, they're huge. These animals had some of the largest eyes in the whole of the fossil record, about 20 centimetres across some of them, because they used to dive to such depths where the water was quite dark to get to their food. So with any luck, we'll be able to clean that up really nicely. Then, in between all of these teeth, there's quite a lot of rock in the way. You can't really see them in their full glory. If I can remove some of that rock and get it down to the bone, they'll look much, much better for that. You'll see a lot more detail. And you can see the sort of cleaning that I'm doing here I've been cleaning up from the tip, taking away all the varnish and the glue that's on here and some of the rock, and you can see a lot more detail of the bone. That's, that's amazing, that detail is there. So how do you remove this? What sort of process do you use? I've got something called an air brazing. It uses compressed air, a very soft powder, sodium bicarbonate, and when I'm cleaning that up, it just basically takes off the varnish and the glue and the thin film of rock that there is on the bone to reveal some really quite beautiful detail. Mm. It's lovely. I mean, you can see, can't you, the difference? It's so marked. I've cleaned up just these first two teeth here, and you can see there's quite a different colour and a lot more detail there. Unfortunately, this specimen is incredibly heavy. It's got lots of cracks in it, and you've got this whole damaged area here. So although I'm going to clean it up and it will look much better, it's too vulnerable to put up on the wall. But we can make a really good quality replica by moulding and casting this and put that painted cast on the wall for you. That'd be amazing. Thank you, Nigel. This is going to be wonderful for us at Biddulph Grange. This is one of our most important specimens we've got in the fossil collection. So we're really excited about this work. Thank you.